I'm here uh, changing oil on my diesel gen uh, generator and actually the last time I changed it was I had to lift it up because the pan didn't fit underneath there too well and so what I'm doing is another method um, using this suction gun right here you can see that the suction gun would turn along uh, you know tube on it you just pull out the oil out of the filler and just put it in the container right here now this thing, I'm going to tell you, it did use some oil. I was surprised. Um, this thing here, it was down at like the ad mark right about here. And you know what's weird about this thing too? You, this is why you got to read the manuals on them. This, you check the oil with this filler not screwed in. Like you use a Briggs & Stratton engine. With a Briggs & Stratton engine, you check the oil with the filler screwed in, right? With this one, you just push it in. You don't you don't um, screw it in to check the oil level because if you screw it in to check the oil level, you're going to be checking it and thinking it's full, and it's not going to be quite full. And when it gets down to the ad mark, it's actually going to be below the ad mark. And this thing also has um, what do you call it? The protection where if your oil's too low, the engine shuts off. But then again, this thing is made in China. And you don't know if that's going to work. The other thing I did with this is I just put a little wing nut here, which is a uh, stainless steel wing nut, so I can disconnect the battery cable pretty quick. And this way I don't leave the battery connected to it. Because it could, I notice things last longer if you disconnect the battery. And, you know, if you're leaving something for a while, because I don't use this all the time, obviously, and it's up for emergencies, but if I got to, you can use it. Um, I just, reconnect it with that wing knot and that's a stainless steel wing knot so it doesn't with a bolt so it doesn't um, corrode which is good so I pulled a lot of oil out of it and what I'm gonna do now is this thing takes just plain old 1550 regular you know uh, you know regular oil nothing you know not this not this no not the synthetic stuff so I'm gonna put it in this container then we'll put it through the little funnel and get it down in there but you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up I'm going to run it then I'm going to suction this stuff out because this doesn't require that much oil I'm going to run it get it all through there suction it out do it a couple times this way it's got really clean oil I've noticed that uh, this diesel thing does consume a little bit of oil not a lot, but I don't know how many hours I was running this. Not too many. This is the second oil change. And, you know, I heard a lot of stuff about the quality of this damn thing because, some, you know, for the, if it works and it doesn't break down, it's great. Because it doesn't use much fuel, but if it breaks, it sucks. You know, that's really how they are because the, the reviews are, they're either they suck or they're great because my I've been lucky with this one this one's been fine for me and I'm trying to keep my luck up by just keeping the oil change but then again I notice some stuff in here sometimes these they're not put together too good at the factory so let's get this thing uh, filled up and we'll see we'll run it a little bit and we'll see what I'm talking about see how quiet it is it's pretty noisy but you know maintenance is everything man a lot of times really maintenance can freaking make your shit last a hell of a lot longer and that's what you got to be doing maintain stuff like a lot it's cheaper to do that than buying parts I don't know if you can see that but that's full right to the top don't screw it in that's what you want to do so we're gonna start this bitch up after I put this plug back in here and uh, I can tell you what using that suction gun is a hell of a lot easier than getting down there lifting this thing up and getting a pan underneath there and taking the screw out like I said I'll just do it twice but you see I got the lights off you know it's off so I know it generates though let's do the thing here you just flip this on uh, that turns key switch over here
it, it's noisy but it sounds less mechanical this sounds a little quieter so I'm gonna pull it out again I'm gonna use that suction gun pull some out fill it up to the top again I'm gonna have to make sure I keep that thing filled right to the top and uh, it should be all right man and I keep that this cover on it too right here this is doubled up heavy-duty tarp and I got a cord that wraps around it so and it's under a carport so it should be pretty good but yeah, this thing's this came in handy a bunch of times. I can tell you that right now. Okay, I just did a second refill after I pulled out the oil with the suction gun. You can see how this works, right? You just pull that handle. It's just a big suction gun made for oil. I've had this for 40 years. It's quality made in the USA. No problem, right? It works. So normally, you just take this. Get your key over here. Let that run a while and uh, get all warmed up and then uh, shut it down. Okay, just verified the oil's full. Actually, that dipstick, as long as it shows anything on a dipstick, you're okay. It there's no um, there's no like add full level on that dipstick. Actually, anything on that dipstick, you're okay. So I was okay on oil. It wasn't low. It should have shut off if it was too low, but it was getting to the point where it probably needed to be added. And I noticed keeping it fuller made it quieter so right now I'm running uh, the Bedini uh, Renaissance charger on this and this battery now this is uh, a Wally World Everstart battery you notice it's a little bit big for the tray I actually had to modify how it's held in with the bracket because it's I put the biggest battery I could possibly fit on this thing so it would start up during an emergency right and uh, but this battery has been doing great because I've been maintaining with that Bedini Renaissance charger, this thing, and this thing desulfates the hell out of the place. And your battery, as long as it's not damaged, um, and it's it'll probably virtually last forever. As long as the plates don't crack or buckle, it'll virtually last forever. Um, I've used some of these desulfators, but not during. It wasn't as good as this one. I actually got this battery was in my Jeep since. 1998 it was good up to about a year and a half ago so it lasted about 17 years and it was a one-year battery that was just using a regular desulfator now I don't I don't I'm keeping it around as a you know a trade-in or something but uh, these things are well worth it because I use them on that I also use them on that big one over here that deep cycle battery I use it on my El Camino I use it on all my cars and just keeps them up to top tip top condition because it gets all that sulfation off the plates because the thing is I've, I've, I've had a problem one time before whereby just noticed I unplug this yeah you know, watch this plug see it came off I had a problem before where um, I used cheap batteries in my motorcycles and they only lasted six months the battery now I got my motorcycle is actually um, I think it's about seven years old and it starts to bike up great even if it hasn't been sitting in a while I got to crank the hell out of it and I've been using that on it and that's it's a battery that doesn't require water it's like a gel type or some crap it's a really good one I think it's an Odyssey and uh, it's been so maintenance is everything man and I'm not sure how long this thing's gonna last but um, just want to say something else too you want to when you run these generators you want to put some kind of load on it even if it's just a regular little freaking electric light because if you don't put a load on it sometimes the, um, the generator head gets where you gotta get it fixed up again and get it started and what you do to do that I've had this I have this actually on another video you take a drill yeah it sounds crazy you take a drill but I'm actually getting at something you take a drill and with the generator running you plug this drill in say you know there's no output coming out of the electricity you spin the drill now it's a variable speed drill you just spin it 
and a lot of times that wakes it up and then it'll start putting it out because I've actually had a problem with my other gas generator one time and what woke it up was doing that trick with the drill but now I realize I run these things every once in a while to make sure they work if you forget to do that do that trick like I said prepping is everything man you want your shit to work when you need it you know it's like you have all this crap and then big emergency happens or something electricity's out because of a hurricane or something and all the power lines are down because of the trees well you want your stuff to work that's all there is to it 